We've been playing with cameras and uh, I should say camera locations. <laughs> <laughs> because with the light, sometimes it's so bright that it causes the camera to overload its contrast and brightness setting, so it can't handle it. So it needs one of those diffusers, which, you know, obviously we're not professional. <laughs> Although it was kind of fun, last night my wife had a friend over and I guess he had worked with, you know, different uh, channels, stations here in um, Sacramento and it was kind of nice, you know, to kind of think about how amateurish <laughs> using my little video camera, you know, compared to, you know, what a professional normally does, you know, with the big camera set up and you know, setting the lights up and getting, you know, everything where you get less glare and no issues with, you know, dealing with echo or all that. And I thought, oh boy, wouldn't that be nice? But then I thought, nah, because usually people that are involved in that kind of level, especially in Christian ministry, are also trying to raise money. <laughs> and the nice thing about what we do at Vidivo, it's all free. And I was telling him that. I said, you know, I said, the nice thing is that, you know, I've always thought about, I mean, it is truth, I've thought about at times, you know, asking for money or donations or whatever. And, you know, I've always rejected that because it just didn't make sense to me. You know, I grew up where God abide, God provide, you know, and I kind of, lived that all my life so when it came time to minister you know in ministry I just couldn't do it you know I've got I helped set up different tape lending libraries and book libraries and always used my own funds as well as you know my family at times to you know start something that would be free to people you know that thankfully gratefully you know my my sister is of the same mind you know because my mother was of while she was still alive was of the same mindset and a lot of us that were from like the old days of like Calvary Chapel you know we we still hang on to that though some now are more so you know pass the plate and get the funds and pay for this and pay for that you know and pay for bathrooms and you know new sound ministry and all these other you know worldly things you really don't need them you know to be honest you can get by without them but, you know, I don't fault people for doing it. It's just, you know, they will, you know, do as they do and minister as they are led by the Spirit of God. And for me, I like being able to just pick up my little tiny orbit sphere and stick it wherever, you know, <laughs> and record however it turns out, you know, and just throw out there the Word of God, you know, and let, let God be who He is and me just be, you know, sinner saved by grace like you. You know, and I think maybe people appreciate that of the less professional and the more real that we are in our day-to-day -day living together as we share the Word of God and discover together, you know, what God can do with just the simplest of things, like my little 99-cent flowers, you know. <laughs> Wow, man, they're growing, aren't they? <laughs> Look around. It's amazing what you can do with things that people throw away. But God chose you in the same way that you, while you thought you were important, were really kind of like the reject of literally righteousness. But God wants to make you the object of his affection to put you in direct relationship with him so that you could move into eternity for all that you have yet to discover what he's going to do not only with you but walking beside you and I think that's pretty awesome when you think about it because that's what I feel is really one of the most powerful things that God does in my life you know, I was kind of looking at this and I realized that, you know what, I probably had the wrong day that I was reading. You know, I just kind of looked at the title and thought, oh, that's going to be interesting, you know. And, you know, I think I'll share it anyways because it feels like this is the right one to share today. So, in Vidivo, you know, Tozer teaching, you know, spirit-led, we will obey the Word of God. You know, I feel as though sometimes people don't realize 
how yielded we all need to be to the Spirit of God. Sometimes people get so structured in their adamant way of looking at things, they don't give any leeway for what God may want to do in their life. They sit down and they say, okay, from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, I automatically do this. From 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock, I'll do this. But we all know that if you are real about your planning, you know that things can interrupt your schedule and that those things can be circumstantial or at the moment, you know, a crisis or even something unplanned for. And so you have to be yielding to that. These plants that you see around me have had to endure some strong winds sometimes when the winds come out of the north or when they come off the ocean, you know, and they blow up through the Central Valley and then they come up out of this side, as you can see my hand pointing, and they kind of blow the plants over. So if they yield, they kind of like get bent down, but once the sun comes out and it's no longer blowing in the wind, they bend back and they yield themselves to the sun and they kind of bend towards that. And so that bending and yielding is something that we all need to learn to do, to not get so regimented in our mindset that we don't let love, mercy, and grace kind of bend us the way that we should be, which is kind of yielding more so to those that are around us that maybe are rigid. Maybe they, they are stuck in some kind of like, you know, bad news, you know, attitude, you know, you see them coming and you know that they're like really bitter or really stuck in their their mindset, well, yield, you know, just kind of back off and back away and let them be who they are today, you know. Just because they are the way they are doesn't mean you can't yield to the Holy Spirit giving you the opportunity to maybe just listen and let them vent and, you know, blow off steam and then eventually you may be surprised that that's all they needed to change. Sometimes yielding is the best way to be led by the Spirit of God. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. 1 John 5 and 6. When the Holy Spirit is in full control of our lives, He will expect our obedience to the written Word of God. But it is part of our human problem that we would like to be full of the Spirit and yet go on and do as we please, not as He chooses. The Holy Spirit who inspired the scriptures will expect obedience to the scriptures. And if we do not give that obedience, we will quench him. This spirit will have obedience, but people do not want to obey the Lord. Every one of us is as full as he wants to be. You could walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But the reality is you want to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So you quench the spirit in your life at times. Everyone has as much as they desire, but we do not want to meet the conditions that God has set for us. Let's use an expensive Cadillac automobile for an illustration. Here is Brother Jones who would love to drive a Cadillac, but he is not going to buy one. I'll tell you why. He does not want a Cadillac badly enough to be willing to pay the price for it. Certainly he wants it, but he does not want it with the kind of desire. So it, but he does not want it with that kind of desire. So he is going to continue to drive his old Chevy. <laughs> now it is plain that many people want to be filled with the Spirit, but it is not with that kind of extreme desire that will not be denied. So we settle for something less, that momentary inspiration as we go to worship in Sunday. Sunday morning, Sunday night, wherever you go, or a Saturday or whatever you may be doing. But we don't choose to really yield ourselves completely over to the Spirit of God, to let Him direct our day-to-day -day existence. Because you see, if you want to be filled with the Spirit of God, you must let the Spirit of God lead you. For as many as were called were led by the Spirit of God. And so, Many are called, but Tozer reminds us few are chosen. And of those that are chosen, fewer still will follow hard after God to allow Him to fill us with His Spirit that we would be 
even driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Because you see, it's easier for us to stand up and act like we're in charge when we get some little portion of the Spirit of God in us and say, oh, well, we cast out demons and do all these things, you know, in Jesus' name. And Jesus may agree with you, you did, but did you know me? Because you see, when Jesus was led by the Spirit of God into the desert to be tempted of the devil, he didn't go out there and rebuke the devil. He said, the Lord take care of you. The Lord do this, the Lord do that. He always turned that authority back to the Father who is in heaven. He didn't presume or assume his full capability, which was that mantle of responsibility as the Son of God, but rather he yielded himself to he who judges righteously, who will one day put Satan in his place. So sometimes I think that we see Pentecostal people or evangelicals get carried away in sometimes the things of the Spirit because they have a little bit of what they think is the Spirit of God. But being filled with the Spirit of God, you would have all knowledge and wisdom and peace, knowing that you could commit unto God and rest in Him His authority to do what He can do that you cannot. Me personally, I like putting God in charge. Whenever God is directing, God's in charge of the results. But whenever I'm doing my own thing, I know what the consequences are because I can see them all around me notoriously having to go back and clean up the mess that I may have made of what God was doing in the first place. We do say, Lord, I would like to be full. It would be wonderful. But we are not willing to proceed to meet His terms. We do not want to pay the price. The Holy Spirit will expect loving obedience to the Word of God. It used to be pretty simple to counsel people in where I grew up at Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. They would go to Romaine, and Romaine would say, well, what's the Bible say? And people were reading the Bible, and they'd say, well, you know, you need to do this. Well, then do it. That's all they'd say is, then do it. Are you going to argue with the Word of God? Then argue with God. So are you obedient, or are you disobedient? You see, when you put it down into simpler terms, all you have to do is cut away all the examples and circumstances and put it down into the basic premise, the basic problem, the basic issue of life. Are you led by the Spirit or are you led by your own will? Are you self-willed or God-willed? That's the point. How do you get to being less self-willed and more God-willed is your choice. You see, Jesus said, deny yourself and that self means self-willed. It means whatever is involved with self, selfish, self-will, self-liberty, you know, self-assertions, self-direction, you know, all those things that are self, you know, things that we think that we need for our self-esteem. Jesus said, deny those. What? You want me to deny self-esteem? Yeah. God already esteemed you. Sinner. <laughs> Maybe saved by grace, but that depends on where you're at, you know, kind of like, are you under grace or are you kind of like thinking you are? You know, pretending, acting, you know, but really you're kind of running around acting as though you're righteous. But when you deny yourself, then you take up your cross and you follow Jesus. And as you follow Jesus, Jesus had this testimony that he was accepted of the Father and that the Father delighted in what he did. And so as we look at Jesus' life, we say to ourselves, do I love my enemies like he did? Do I get involved in politics or did Jesus get involved in politics? Am I doing what Jesus said, even if I'm just going by example? Am I exemplifying Jesus or am I adapting my way to his way? Do you see what I mean? Whenever you put self in there, if there's anything that can be involved in self, you really haven't denied yourself, have you? And so that is the first thing that Jesus said to anyone that would come after him. Deny yourself, then take up your cross and follow me. So the first thing really is, you really have to get rid of who you are in order to discover who he is. That is, if, and it's a big if, you want to be filled 
with the Spirit of God.